I'm pretty sure that each and every one of us here in this room has engaged in online shopping. Shopee, Lazada, Zalora. So when we purchase an item, the seller will pack up our stuff and deliver it using a shipping or logistics company, you know, such as Porcelagio or JNT, just to name a few. And then these shipping companies will then deliver the package to our doorstep. We utilize postal services for various purposes, but mostly to connect and communicate with each other. Similarly, the cells in our body also need to communicate with one another. So they do this either by releasing hormones or through neurotransmitters. One other way of cell communication is when cells release tiny nanoparticles containing cargoes to the extracellular environment. Our body has over 30 to 40 trillion cells, and each of the cells has their own postal services where they package a cargo, ship it outside, and deliver it to either a neighboring cell or a distant cell. So these tiny nanoparticles are called EVs. EVs, um, not electric vehicles like Tesla, yeah? So EVs, extracellular vesicles. I am a cancer researcher working at University of Bangsa and Malaysia, and I have been working with EVs over the past seven years. I am a firm believer that first impressions are not always right. So you know, back in the 1980s, when EVs were first discovered, they were initially disregarded as cellular waste or cellular garbage. So it was not until early 2000 that scientists discover that these EVs play important role in the cellular process and more importantly in cellular communication. These EVs are very small as compared to the cells releasing them. So as the image shown here, this is taken from my lab by the way, so the blue circles are the cells and the red dots are the EVs. So do you know how small an EV is? To put things in perspective, try imagining yourself um, walking on a beach like somewhere in probably Langkawi or in Bali and picking up a grain of sand. Now, try imagining that one grain of sand being split into one million equal parts. So that one part is almost equivalent to 100 nanometers, which is the typical range of an EV. Because the size is so small, you cannot even see it with your naked eye or even using a conventional microscope. You will need to utilize a high-end specialized equipment called an electron microscope. So this picture here is taken by in our lab of an EV, a single EV particle from a cancer patient. So we utilize an electron microscope to view this. So if you can see, it's sort of like, like a tiny bubble, like a tiny ball. Since its discovery and over the past few decades, um, EVs have gained considerable interest in the biomedical research. Cells release EVs and these EVs can travel and transfer bioactive molecules such as DNA, RNA, and even protein throughout the whole body. Even disease cells, such as cancer cells, are also able to release EVs. So research has shown that when cancer cells release EVs, these EVs are taken up by other cells, such as healthy cells and immune cells. So when this happens, these cells have their cellular processes altered in favor of the cancer cells. Scientists have been capturing these EVs to get insights into how cancer cells coordinate and communicate with each other. So why is this important to know? So cancer is a global burden that is affecting millions of lives, both locally and worldwide. And I believe that each and every one of us here has been touched by cancer, either by a family member or a friend or even someone famous such as Steve Jobs. Despite the advancements in treatment and managing the disease, 
detecting cancer early is still a challenge. Depending on the type of cancer, sometimes cancer detection can be laborious and quite invasive. Cells release EVs into the circulation, meaning that these EVs can be found in your bodily fluids, your urine, your blood, your saliva, your sweat, your tears, even in your breast milk. Scientists, including myself, have been using these EVs, capturing these EVs, and trying to get information on whether a cancer is present or not. So to put, um, so let me give an example. Um, because EVs are easy to isolate, such as from a simple blood draw, we are able to tell or use EVs as a liquid biopsy. So, for instance, so this is a kit. This is a kit in the U.S. where they take EVs from urine of individuals who are uncertain if they have prostate cancer or not. So they use this kit from the urine of these certain individuals to check whether this particular individual has prostate cancer. In fact, this kit is actually being endorsed to be included in their National Cancer Guideline. As a researcher and a scientist, I am often asked, what do I do in the lab? How does my research contribute towards the society and the community? So in my lab, we are looking at this from two different angles. So for the first angle, we are detecting specific biomarkers from colorectal cancer patients. So what we do is we collaborate with the Hospital Chancellor Tunku Muris in Cheras, HUKM. We take serum from the colorectal cancer patients and isolate the EVs and detect specific proteins that can tell us whether this patient or this individual has colorectal cancer or not. So essentially down the line, we are aiming to utilize EVs to detect cancers using bodily fluids. Another angle that we're looking at is trying to understand how cancer cells communicate with immune cells. So in this particular research, what we do is we isolate the EVs from cancer cells and put them inside the immune cells. Based on our data, once we do this, the EVs are able to suppress or affect the function of these immune cells. So personalized or precision medicine is a concept where we tailor or personalize treatment according to an individual's genetic makeup, environmental and lifestyle factors. So back in 2015, Barack Obama launched the Precision Medicine Initiative to revolutionize the healthcare instead of using a one-size-fits-all approach to a more tailored individualized approach. In Malaysia, the Academy of Sciences of Malaysia is currently drafting a similar initiative. So one concept of precision medicine or personalized medicine is to be able to stratify patients based on how they respond to treatment. So let's say you have patient A who responds well to a certain treatment and patient B who does not respond well to the same treatment. As a molecular biologist, we know that these differences and these changes happens at the molecular and the cellular level and can be relayed through EVs. So if we were to isolate these EVs and identify specific patterns or signals that correlate with the responsiveness towards treatment, we are able to utilize this particular information for other patients, other populations, and even for other diseases as well. This is where EV fits into the concept of personalized medicine. Have you guys seen this movie? No? You guys are too young, good. <laughs> so this is one of my mom's favorite movie. So in this movie, so she's in the crowd right now. So in this movie, um, the Greek utilizes a wooden horse as a deceptive mechanism to hide the soldiers and infiltrate the city of Troy. So this is a Trojan horse concept. And because EVs are tolerated well by the immune system and they can be easily manual engineered and manipulated, certain labs have been using as a Trojan horse. So what they do is they load drugs or even chemicals or even therapies into the EVs to be delivered to the cells. In fact, there are several clinical trials ongoing in the US and in China where they utilize EVs 
to deliver drugs for diseases such as cancer or even COVID. Apart from the therapeutics and diagnostics purposes in cancer that EVs are playing a role, EVs are also important in the stem cell arena as well. Stem cells release EVs. And now that we know that these EVs can reflect the properties of the cells releasing them, companies are using EVs as a cell-free stem cell-based alternative. So these companies are using stem cell-derived EVs for, for tissue regeneration, for anti-inflammation, for wound healing, and even for cosmetics purposes. So I came across this article. So this was published last month. So apparently, EVs are becoming the in thing for cosmetics in Europe. So yes, EVs can be used for cosmetic purposes and it may reach your shelves sooner than you think. EVs are tiny molecules with a massive potential that we have barely tapped into. So what I am presenting here today is just the tip of the iceberg of what EVs can achieve. I believe that with the advancement of new technologies and generation of new knowledge, EVs are paving their way to become important molecules in our quest to better understand disease, even if it is just one particle at a time. Thank you.